Independence Day worship service. Starting from today, we are entering into a holy time of our Christian liturgical year and the beginning of our Lenten season. So every prayer, every hymn to be sung, and every worship, we are taking a step forward toward the Calvary, the cross of Jesus Christ, and by which and through which we find ourselves again in the light of Jesus' teaching, in the light of deepening our understanding of God's mysterious salvation that still works upon our lives. So brothers and sisters, welcome to this very solemn and holy time of our worship. I'd like to invite Carol to lead us for worship. Good evening. Good evening. Please stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of God's salvation. Return with all your heart, with weeping, fasting, mourning. But our gracious Lord says, No longer the bond of his day has that love. Be reconciled to God through Christ Jesus and receive a new and right spirit within. We fast and pray as a man and disciple, preparing ourselves for faithful exercise Our first hymn this evening is hymn number 735, <clears throat> I Need Thee Every Hour. We will sing verses 1, 3, and 4. <laughs> Confession of sin. Creator, God, who fashioned us out of dust, breathing your spirit into us so that we might sing your praise. Lord, we have now received the gift of life, and we are worthy of the Holy Ghost, clinging to your head, bearing the idols of our own dignity. We have denied our creaturely status, seeking to lord it over those we label less than. We scorn all our different, ignoring, delivering, murdering, and bombing. We believe 
survival of the fittest lives, discounting the weak and profiting by others' pain. Not for seeking the awful providence, we stop our years, cry of gold in you. You told us the outbreak, we have had enough. We have been unfaithful stewards, O Lord. Save for your grace, we perish. join me in prayer of confession. Have mercy on us according to your loving kindness. Breathe new life into us once more, so we might be a people you created us to be. Restore us the joy of your salvation, that we might do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly before the Lord Jesus Christ. To, be, to receive the imposition of the ashes, please come forward. And uh, this imposition of ashes is a symbol, a symbol of our finite few and symbol of our shortcomings into the holy presence of God. From that to your prayer. Hear the promise of God. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you will be clean from all your uncleanness. And from all your idols, I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Friends, the promises of God are true. He himself bore our sins in the body on the cross. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Live now as a new people, free to love God and our neighbor. Amen. As we receive the word, let us join together a prayer for illumination. Lord of life, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that as we hear this word, they may become a living word for us, to the glory of our living Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
scriptures from two passages from Genesis chapter 3 verse 19 and Psalm 103 starting from verse 15 to 17. Let us give our ears. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The life of mortal is like a grass, they flourish like a flower in the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with their children's children. The word of the Lord. Today is Ash Wednesday, as you know, the first day of Lent for many Christians over at least from our tradition about 1,500 years. For more than this old, long time of our tradition, Christians have used this word to mark the day as they dip their fingers into ash and smudge about foreheads with the sign of the cross. The word allude to when God admonished Adam and Eve as they left the Garden of Eden, as we know it from the book of Genesis. As one of the theologians, Stephanie Porcel, said this, when we repeat this word, from ashes we are formed, and to ashes we return, we remember that we continue that journey into the vast, wide open, fallen world, with our forehead smeared with ashes, we are called upon to face our own mortality and also our failure. It is sobering to confront the prospect of our own mortality, especially as we live in a culture that tells us all the time if we maintain a good, healthy, strict diet, or if we stockpile lots of money, or if we track our steps every day, and if we mess our life, perhaps we can cheat death. But however you know, and I know, this is quite simply it's not true. In the act of receiving ashes, we are called to bear out our whole, our whole selves to God. Our beautiful selves, our messy and dirty selves, our sinful selves. There is no hiding, no hiding behind the veiled word or elusive concept. Ash Wednesday cuts through all of that. I found a comfort in the transparency and the honesty of this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, when we confess our human brokenness and our uh, finity, there is a sense of relief and liberation that comes with the knowing that it is not all up to us to manage our life, to make things perfect. God is God, and what is more, God loves and welcomes us without any conditions and exceptions. My prayer for us today comes from a poem by Jen Richardson and Paul Ash Wednesday. And the subtitle is Blessing the Dust. So let us be marked, not for sorrow, and let us be marked, not for shame. Let us be marked, not for false humility, or for thinking that we are less than we are, but for clear
proclaiming what God can do within the dust, within the dirt, within the stuff of which the, uh, the world is made, and within the stars that blaze in our bones, and the galaxies that spiral inside the snatch that we live. What we keep at bay becomes the very things that our faith depends on. By admitting our finitude, we see God's infinity. Confronting death brings us new life. And knowing our limit gives us freedom unimaginable. And through the mess of the dust, that we come to know the whole as we depart from this place remember that you and I we are not here forever and that challenges us to live every day the very best in every circumstance Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, creator and ruler of the universe. Hallowed be thy name, 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night when Jesus was, Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took the bread. When he had given thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after the supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks to God and he gave to his disciples, he said, Drink of it, all of you. This is a new covenant sealed in my blood, which is given for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. These are the gifts for the people of God. So please come. join together in prayer after communion. Thanks to your grace through Jesus Christ, these bones and give to proclaim your greatness, O Lord. You love us to the end, feeding us from your own hand, starred with love. You have placed your spirit within and among us to set our lives spinning free the new creation according to your design. May we go forth to serve as vessels of earth praise in all that we do as we rise from the table to serve the according world in your name and to your glory we pray. Amen. Our sending hymn is 223 when I survey wondrous cross words and verses 1 and and four.
Go as those marked as God's beloved. Look at those you meet in this week and remember each one is also God's beloved child children. For knowing your days on earth are numbered, make the most each day you are given by showing kindness and fighting for justice. Go embark on this Lenten journey. Go where God sends you to do God's work. Thank you.